In this demonstration, we're going to follow on from the lecture where we showed the Azure services and just to show you what it looks like to go into the Azure portal and have a look around. So to begin with, we're going to head straight over to our web browser. And as you can see, I'm already logged into the Azure portal here, but if you weren't logged in, you would typically see a login screen. So if I go to in private window and just go to portal.azure.com, uh, this is where you'll be prompted to log in to your Azure account. And I highly encourage you to get a trial account if you're trying this out for the first time and play around in there. Just make sure to delete everything and don't incur any charges if you are billing yourself for anything via credit card or to your company. That's on you, what you, what you decide to do. Um, but highly encourage you to try and follow along if you can. Uh, but if I go back to the other window, and you can see I logged in uh, and what I have are a few things to kind of navigate. So on the top of the screen, first of all, you can see I've got search resources, services, and docs. This is where I can just search and see what I've already got running. I have this icon here, which opens up a cloud shell. Uh, so you'll hear more about management tools in subsequent lectures, um, but the cloud shell allows us to do PowerShell commands or Azure CLI commands directly in here. So if I don't want to click around, I want to type instead, that's where I'd use the cloud shell. I have a section around my directory and subscriptions. If I select this, this is where I can switch into different directories, so Azure AD directories, where I've got my users being managed, uh, and switch subscriptions as well. Uh, I then have my notification section. You know, sometimes Microsoft will tell us, hey, there's some new updates available. You can see I'm using a Visual Studio Enterprise subscription here, and I have a remaining credit of $148 uh, available there. And if I close this down, uh, then I get this screen, which allows me to change my different color schemes. So some people like the, the dark theme, some people like the standard blue. Um, really up to you what you do there. These are just settings uh, around the portal itself. Uh, if I need help, I've got the help section here. Uh, and then I've also got a feedback section so I can contact Microsoft directly there uh, and let them know, you know, any in, any feedback on the portal itself. Uh, and then I've got the, you know, account section of here where I can log in. So again, you can see uh, I'm logged in with my Microsoft account there. Um, so if I go back now and look at the main portal area on the left hand side, you'll see I've got create a resource, home, dashboard, and all services. And right now, if I click dashboard, uh, this is a dashboard that I've just created previously, uh, and it's got all my resources in it. It's got you know different monitors and alarms, and you can have multiple dashboards uh, for you. Your admins may have created some. You can create some. You know if you're trying to you know bundle together different monitors from your applications, you can do that there. Uh, if I go back to home, that's going to present me with this home screen that I've got here. And typically, Microsoft makes some changes to this from time to time, so it may look a little bit different by the time you do it. Uh, and they show some sort of key Azure services on the top. Again, I can create a resource directly from here as well. Um, but before we go into all the services, the last thing I'll just show you on the left hand side, we have this favorite section here. This is customizable, so you can decide you know, if something is in favorites uh, or, or not. That's really up to you. But there's a lot here that Microsoft you know, puts in there already for you that they think you, you might want to use. But let's go to all services, first of all. So if I click all services, and here we'll see all the services divided up and there are lots and lots of them available here. To put one in the favorites, just click the little star uh, next to the, the service here itself. So if I wanted to favorite uh, perhaps management groups, I could hit the star here. And then if I scroll down on the left hand side, uh, I will see management groups you know, in my, in my favorites now. Uh, but again, going back to all services, and if you think about that grid of Azure services available, essentially this is where you can go to consume them. So if I want to build virtual machines, I go to compute. Uh, I can see virtual machines here. If I want to build storage, I can go here. I can build a storage account. All of these things are here for us um, to essentially use. So I'll just go ahead and build a virtual machine here to show you what it what really entails. Uh, so if I click compute and I click virtual machines, here comes the virtual machine wizard, and you can see the virtual machines I already have. These are already built, so I've got a Windows and a Linux VM already built in my environment. But I want to go ahead and add a new one to my Azure environment. I click Add, and Microsoft, you know, gives us this really, really clean portal and you know wizard to guide us through it. So it starts off on the top. You see they've divided up. We've got like basics, disks, network, management, advanced, tags, and then we review and create. Um, but if I scroll down, and let's start with the basic settings. One, I always choose a subscription to put my resources in. So what does that mean specifically? Well, that's the billing boundary uh, where I want to put those specific resources. And then I choose my resource group as well. This is essentially a container. Think about like a filing cabinet. You want to put all your resources together that belong together. Um, that's what my resource group is for. So I can simply create a new one. 
give it a name, so we'll call this AZ Exam Test 1. Uh, that's just my resource group name that I'm going to use. And now I give it a virtual machine name, so I'm going to call this one Nicolia01. That's my server name. Now I choose the region that it goes into. So again, I can choose all my Azure regions now, unless I have a policy in place that prevents me from using certain regions or some regions aren't available in my account. Um, and some recommended regions you know, might come up already. Um, but I'll just choose you know, East US for right now. Uh, I've got availability options. You'll hear more about those later on. But by default, no infrastructure redundancy required. However, if I want to, I can use availability zones or availability sets and get more on that later on. Now I choose my image. So for, let me just recap a little bit before I do that. One, the subscription is where I'm going to be billed for this. So this is coming out of the credits I have in my Visual Studio Enterprise subscription. Um, the region is the Azure Data Center region where I'm going to deploy this workload into. Uh, and now I haven't even really created a VM yet. I've just said where it's going to run. Now I need to choose the image I'm going to create it from. So think about this as like the VM template on premises this is like the image I'm going to stamp out from. So I can do you know the Ubuntu server or the Windows server. Say I want to do Windows Server 2019. I can select that and then I choose my size. So this is where I choose the CPU and memory configuration for that server. So he has all the offerings. Again, you'll learn more about all the different codes and names a little bit later on. But this is where I choose the size, the disk configuration, etc. that I'm able to do. And then we go on and we put in some user accounts. So I'm just going to use Nick Collier again here. And I'm going to put a password in. And these passwords and this username here are essentially just to log into the machine after it's built. Uh, now I have inbound port rules. So do I want you know any ports you know made available by default? So this is really a security setting um, to make sure that you know we can RDP into the server. So if I want to connect into it over the internet, I would select this and choose RDP. If I was a Linux server, I'd probably have SSH on there. Um, but I'm going to choose none for right now. We're not going to log into the server when it's built or anything. And then you have this option of save money, save up to 49% with a license you already own using Azure Hybrid Benefit. So if you already have Windows licensing, um, you can basically go here, hit yes, and then bring your licensing with you and then save money. Uh, so if I go ahead and click next on disks, uh, this gives us our disk option. Uh, you'll learn more about all the disk options later on, but you can choose between premium SSD, standard SSD, and standard HDD. The SSD is naturally being the faster, higher performing disks. Uh, I can add additional data disks to the machine itself. So think of these like, hey, I've got my PC or laptop at home, and I want to add an additional drive. This is where I would do that. Um, and that's all done there. Then I decide on the networking configuration for that machine. Which network do I want it to go in? Right now, for the you know purposes of simplicity, I'm just going to build a new network with a new subnet with a new public IP. I'm accepting all the defaults here, um, you know, to basically build that into. Um, but lots and lots of settings around networking here that if you wanted to get more into virtual machines, you absolutely could. Uh, then we have some management options. So this is around Azure Security Center, which is already you know by, on by default in the basic plan. You'll learn more about that later on as well. Um, and then we've got things like boot diagnostics for monitoring, guest OS diagnostics, where do I want to store the logs? Do I want to assign system identities? Do I want to enable auto shutdown? This is a really cool feature um, because perhaps I want to make sure that 7 p.m. today, um, it automatically gets shut down so I don't incur any costs. And that's on by default now in the portal when you build something. And it's great because it stops you accidentally building things and leaving them running that incur costs that you didn't mean to. Um, then we have some advanced settings. Again, not really you know, covered for the purposes of the AZ900 exam, but certainly something if you're doing AZ103 you would want to cover. Uh, and then we can basically tag, give the, you know, some metadata associated with the VM, like who, what's the cost center, you know, things like that. Uh, and then when we're done, we simply hit review uh, and we can basically go ahead and create that server. Um, now you can see our Windows Server, he has the cost, you know, seven you know, cents basically per hour, essentially we're gonna pay there. Uh, and it gives us all the details of all the settings that we've chosen. And then we go ahead and click create, or we could download a template for automation. If we wanted to automatically deploy these without filling up the form every time in the future, we can download that template. Um, but essentially I click create and it's gonna go and send that off and start building that virtual machine. And that really 
Uh, what I wanted to show you there was just the benefits of cloud for any of those services available in the you know Azure services area there. And we you know, have a similar option to basically go ahead, fill out what we need to deploy, and go ahead and deploy it. And Microsoft is providing this virtual machine as a service to us. I still need to patch the Windows Server. I still need to log in and install my applications when it's done. Um, but you know, I don't have to manage everything that's required to get to this point. I've chosen which region I want it to go in. I've chosen which network I want to connect it to. I decide the storage I want to put on it. All of that's just controlled from this UI, um, you know, and I think it's just amazing when we think about how far we've come in virtualization that we're just able to do this today. Uh, and then there's all these other management tools and things around it. Uh, you can see how my deployment's underway. It's already started creating the network and some of the other associated constructs. And when it's complete, it's going to let me know. And then I'll be able to go into my virtual machine section, click here, and see that virtual machine, you know, once it is built. Uh, and you can see right now, Nick Collier 01, it's still in the creating process as we speak. Uh, so with that, that's a very brief overview of the Azure portal and how you would go about just creating a very simple Azure virtual machine.